Okay. Let's see. Just hop straight into it. So for this one, we are going to just watch through once, straight through, um, and then kind of point out whatever pops up that looks interesting. It's gonna be. Oh, it's interesting that the replays don't show the uh, the player names on the oh, little God. like eagle flying screen. Oh, also, uh, this does have inputs on the whole time, but it does also have that menu on the whole time. So just advanced warning. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can never hit doobie like that. So. Yeah, that should hit for sure. Okay. This one was an interesting one. I whiff grab and then just hit anyway. He still kind of got covered by uh, Eddie because he didn't have time to react before he was back in block stun. A good anti air there for sure. Oh, he got chipped. Okay. Yeah. So I saw the chipped block by a pose. <laughs> yep, it is a special, you know? Ooh, did you try and reflect that one, or were you just trying to reposition Eddie? I was probably trying to reflect it, okay. but it could have been either. Yeah, I think that that would have been the right timing if it was the fast fireball. Oh god, that's brutal. Okay, yep. Aw. Oh. This one was a very malign decision. Yeah, I will give context. This is a match 8 out of 9 for this set. Best okay. of 5. So there's definitely some elements of like, they've adapted the things I'm doing, I've adapted the things they're doing. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Fish combo, or a frog combo. Yeah, I had a really good start here, so managed to lose because, well, I just didn't know how I was supposed to block certain things after this point. Yeah, Leo, once he gets pressure going, is pretty scary. And Zato doesn't have the greatest defensive options to force people off of them, but... Uh, you mean any defensive options? He has backdash. <laughs> you have universal options. Is that... Well, oh! Yeah, traded. What? I, I don't think that even traded. Sorry, I'm gonna rewind that slightly. There. Oh, Eddie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised that that wasn't invincible at that point, honestly. Yeah, it was yeah Eddie like... will trade last set. Yeah. Yup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just okay. grab. Yeah. Well, let's see, first things first, uh, Diamond Mew, as the resident Leo here, uh, or at least the person who plays Leo out of all of us, did you see anything that stood out to you super drastically? Yeah, uh, he hit you with a lot of Faith Berserker slashes, where uh, he would do, like, far slash 5H into Berserker slash, which is the one that crosses up. That's not real, and you can throw him out of it. And you have to be, be paying attention, even when you're getting comboed because he can't combo into it unless it's a counter hit. Yeah, that's one of those moves where um, it's real because of the mental stack, but it in and of itself is very reactable. Um, yeah. It, it is also like definitely a super bad habit of a lot of Leos to do specifically far slash 5H Berserker slash. So that's a good place to like start looking for it. Yeah. And I, it's kind of funny. I feel like you need to look out for it more when you're being comboed. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can find an example of the situation. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I think the Leo player isn't doing anything like too fancy, just like regular Leo stuff. Yeah, like right like here. This did not combo. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's gravel, but I just... It's something it, I'm not going to get to. 
Yeah, I, yeah. It but just like something to something to get used to is when you're getting hit. It's not like you really have to look out for anything besides a fake berserker slash. And then when he does hit you with this, this is like incredibly fucked up OP. He just like kind of didn't do it here for some reason. Um, like if you see, he. Uh, So he hits you with it, and then he just, like, walks for a little bit, and then I think he, like, this is when you hit kick, and then yeah. he goes for the overhead, which is why you mashing out worked. Yeah. Um, but against, like, Berserker Slash here, he gets, like, a true meaty same side kick. I think he can true meaty cross-up kick, no. too? No? Not quite? No. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you just get thrown out of that if they're throw happy. Gotcha, okay, that makes sense. He gets true meaty same side lower overhead. And uh, he can go for uh, a cross up that's not true. But yeah, he just has to, for the yeah, most part. It's... Dissuade them from going for throw with meaty overhead or meaty low. In that situation where he, you know, he hit him and then did the fake cross up dash or whatever, how many frames does he have to get the throw in there? Uh, it's a not lot. A ton. On, or, is there? Well, let's see. On it looks really like this, tight. Um, it, this is less like looking for the throw. Uh, this is more just like if you block this, you don't get put into fucked up Oki. Okay. okay. Yeah. I was confused there. I thought you were saying yeah. you could throw so him on him. If well, you can throw him here. Five H on block. Yeah, this this is probably throwable. Honestly, oh, it's definitely throwable. Well, the question here is, it looks like Zato's actionable here, <laughs> where Leo's all the way over there. So the throw might whiff would be what I'd be worried about. Uh, it doesn't. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I guess he can like, just like throw his foot. I'm like sorry. I've I've gotten thrown here and have thrown Leo's here in this exact spot. Okay, okay. It's like it's consistent. Here, I am I dead sleep. tired. I think I'm just gonna go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll grab your vod review for tomorrow. Um, Ooh, I don't know if tomorrow will work. Okay, then we'll probably use yours for the like the tightly edited test. <laughs> sure, whatever. Come on. All right, I'll see y'all around. See ya later. All right. All right. I'm gonna see. I saw the uh, the combo version of it again here. Yeah. Yeah. This one again. You have, you have so much time to oh, throw yeah, this. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Okay. It's it's actually I feel like uh, mashable by quick six. buttons. Uh, but... yeah, Zato unfortunately is the six frame club, so probably yeah. a bit risky. If this is done um, on block though, like this hits, but close or far slash five H, and then when you block this, just kind of look for okay, are they doing a dash? If so, just input throw. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, it just like against better Leo players, they will mix up where they're going for it. But it just like you can see, he's doing it on hit because he's just autopiloting yeah. it. So that's something that will like get you. Basically, if you can recognize that, you'll probably just have your win rate against Leo go up like two to three floors. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, if you could throw working. Berserker Slash, you force Leos to actually use their brain and not just autopilot back, autopilot into back turn, into more autopilot back turn. Mm -hmm. So, you, you force them to play the game. Very important, for sure. <laughs> but okay, so I I think we've talked about that enough at this point. It, you get the yeah. concept. So Leo. We'll, uh, it is super important, because yeah, it, so win conditions. Your win condition is have Eddie out preferably in like a sandwich setup um, and be just like running safe mix against whoever the fuck the opponent is. Um, Leo's win condition though is being directly on top of you in back turn stance. Yeah. I feel like it's not his only win condition because in the corner in non back turn is Almost just as scary. Well, it's not. True. It's not it, just as scary, but it is. It's as threatening scary still. reward wise. It's less scary mix up wise. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a couple of really good anti airs in here, by the way. Um, 
I am actually... Okay, this might be bad advice um, for Zato specifically. Um, you like to use 5p and 2p a lot, and that is good in that it is the most likely thing to hit, because, you know, it's your fastest buttons. Uh, however, it's bad in that the full reward you get from it is, like, a couple 5Ps, and then you're right here. This well, I actually learned is... something. Or what's up? I actually learned something about this specific situation. In the vast majority of cases, if if you're matching with, like, uh, 5P and that hits twice, you will almost always have the window to do a pose. This was something I was not aware of at the time. Okay. So... That's something that I want to integrate into like my game more is mash five P but then actually go right into something and give no time for the opponent to like actually turn that. Yeah. And or, like, like punish me mash it, mashing into a pose is actually really strong because it stop it forces them not to mash. Yeah, and then if they're afraid of a pose, it's a chance for me to grab or go for the the low dust, the uh Two dust. Uh, yeah, sweep to get okay. So, All right. yeah. I'm actually checking something real quick here in the background. Dust loop, please go into dark mode. Okay, so yeah, I know your, for five P, for example, is a uh, frame six, which yeah. like yeah, makes sense. Um, your and same with your two P. Your two K is only one frame slower. So I feel like if you're going to mash out, um, the fact that you can do 5p, 5p oppose is very good for sure. That like definitely adds more reward there. Um, I still think that in situations where you're mashing because you're confident it will work rather than mashing because, oh God, get off me. I need my fastest thing right now. Um, the extra one frame slower going for 2k and then getting 2d knockdown like you're saying um is if you get 2d knockdown you can get some like really fucked up OP stuff going right yeah yeah so that's how you like get to your win condition um i was trying to check what frame 5k and close slash were actually and close slash is all the way up at nine which yeah damn oof is auto but yeah yeah so definitely just like test using 2k more and, uh, yeah, I could definitely see it being the better use in a lot of situations. I think there's definitely some moves where I'm, I'm going to go with the, the 5P, because I think it's probably going to be more lively actually at the person, but like, definitely, yeah, I think that's definitely something to consider doing. Yeah, range differences definitely matter. Um, and yeah, it like 5P and 2P definitely have their place. Just don't be afraid to give up the single frame for potentially, like, legitimately your win condition in the thing like even if uh to take my character as an example even if milia's 2p was actually frame hell four i would probably still try and 2k out of a lot more situations because one resets to neutral the other one gives me my win condition but that's something to definitely just like mess with on your own and like definitely go into training mode and practice mashing out with 2k 2d um, just to make sure that your hands can do it when you need to uh, it's very important to do that for defensive things especially because you know you need them like right now when you need them um, okay though Yep, there's the mash. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah, the oppose definitely seems like it helps a lot with being able to anti-air some like very strong jump-in buttons. Yeah, and, yeah. It, it can keep people like levitated in the air for a bit for you to respond with two two H and actually get like a good solid frog yeah. loop going. Well, a lot of those. It also just like makes it so that you don't get hit on the way in. It's like you oh, can yeah, probably no. actually like, anti-air Rams jump H. So congrats on oppose the only just in the game. Who can oppose that. is so fucked up. It just deletes their hitbox. Yeah, it's so weird. It like it's neat, but damn, is it weird? Um, like to fight against. Yeah, it, it's. I think it's one of like Zato's like cornerstone neutral tools. It's just. <laughs> Oppose. I yeah. uh, can't press buttons now. Yeah, I think I definitely need to exploit Oppose's ability to make people stop pressing buttons for grabs and command grabs, especially. Yeah. I'm definitely too reluctant to grab people. Like, Oppose into command grab is incredibly strong. 
because they can't grab you out of your command grab because it's throwing me in, and a pose stops them from mashing. So they can literally only jump or super. Yeah, and if if you know they're expecting you now to do that, then you can switch it up with something else. To yeah. like at no cost to yourself. So. Okay, I'm gonna point this out. I don't know if this is an adaptation from earlier in the set or a defensive habit, but he once again goes to this like weird delayed back turn overhead instead of meeting it. Um, and so you try to mash out like you did last time, and it trades here, and this is like definitely in Leo's favor, both damage and positioning wise. But again, like if this is something where, like you said, this is set eight of nine. So yeah. if this is just, you were getting 5p on it very regularly, then cool. Yeah, just like player adaptation, this time he timed it better. Um, if yeah, he I'll... is a habit on wake up though, that is something to be very careful of. Yeah, this is definitely a scenario that happened a few times, but I think it's only like three times where I ever really mash out of that situation. Okay. Uh, and that kind of that kind of we both get knocked down sort of thing happened. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I could definitely uh, see being me just like mashing out there a lot. Yeah, I do. That person is happy to fighting you. You dead. You, you tend to heavily favor um, poking out with, like there was one, uh, but poking out with like 5p or 2p on defense a lot. Um, and it can be very good, especially because, yeah, like the range that you can poke from is so non standard for a lot of this game with those quick moves. Um, but yeah, as people tighten up their setups, then that becomes just like. Zatra doesn't have a lot of help. <laughs> so it's yeah, a gamble yeah. you can only take a couple times. Also, something I feel just in general, you don't abuse Zato's air mobility and air. I've been as much. trying to, um, but it's definitely something like it's it's part of his game that I've, I've not gotten to as much yet. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, I've definitely yeah, been. Oh yeah. As I say, just in general, like you see the uh, Leo air dashing a bunch. So if if like anti airing isn't quite working, which it does seem to be working quite a bit here, because he just sort of just air dash into block. But uh, you can jump and just do a jump P in the air. And if it whiffs, ah, you, you whiff jump P. You don't really get punished for it. But it's a like a long lasting hitbox that just stops people from air dashing at you. Yeah, I think one thing especially I've, I've wanted to get down in response to people's air dashes is um, jump, uh, jump K into dust and then into... Um, yeah. Jump heavy slash because that can actually carry people in the corner for middle. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's one thing I've been trying to work on, but it's just, it's not something I've, I've created myself on enough yet. So yeah. it's definitely, it's not really come up in any matches where I've performed it well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to pause here real quick. Uh, I think that this is. This is either not recognizing the situation that you got or just like not having the muscle memory for it. But uh, here's one where you actually do just get the 2K 2D. Here, let me get 2K 2D. Um, but I either get to recognize the situation or something because you back off afterwards. Like, I realized that no, Eddie, no Eddie meter gauge. is not. Well, I had no Eddie meter, which is the huge thing. Is like, if I don't have Eddie meter, this isn't much, I feel like, personally. Um, um. Yeah, I mean, like, without Eddie meter, you're not in a great spot for sure. Uh, this is something where I'd say you should probably try and specifically work on when you get a hit and don't have Eddie, how to uh, like keep advantage. Because like for example here, let me uh, yeah okay so this 2D hits right. Your Eddie gauge is just completely gone. It's like going to start filling up in a second. Um, one thing that you could do here, kind of going back to what we were talking about with Pepto, is. Uh, you have the 2D knockdown, so you can safe jump off of this. And you're giving up mix-up to keep control of the situation. Because, you know, Leo can't DP you. If he presses buttons, whatever, you just hit him, and then you're Zato, so you probably do, like, jump in button, close slash 2D again. And maybe have Eddie by then. Um, but, like, just keeping the kind of pressure up there, you do have at least the universal options, which are, like, you know, after he blocks your move, you're plus, so you can go for just really basic strike throw mix. 
rather than backing off and letting Leo kind of, like you're giving him a lot of space and damn, Leo's fireballs are good. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I guess the situation I could have gone for um, 2 2 H into uh, 2 S, because I can sometimes hit. And if I had a meter, uh, um, so I. 2 I, 2 H into 2 S is going to be the safest option, probably. But, like. Well, okay, how active is 2 2 H? Because it, it can be made plus. Is that what it is? Is that oh, invite yeah, hell? It, it, yeah, it's invite uh, hell. Yeah, it's active for quite a while, so it can definitely be made plus. Um, so then, yeah, that would probably work. I didn't realize it was active for 32 frames. Yeah. So, that's good, but yeah. there's like, something and... to keep pressure up. Uh, in that situation, though, I would say 2-2-H and see if you can run up and do close slash. Because 2-S is minus, and you don't have like pressure options off of it. Well... Yeah, I think in the situation I don't have meter, yeah, the, the two, uh, 2 2 h and 2 close slash would probably be better. If I had meter, I think I'd probably honestly go, like, looking at the situation now, 2 2 h into Roman Cancel into uh, 2 s or close slash 2 s and then uh, 2 h yeah. Uh, and what? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, you're talking about, like, if the 2 2 h hits, right? If 2 2 H hits, then yeah, Roman cancel to get that kind of knock back. Yeah, in. sorry, I, I wasn't even talking about it hitting. I was just talking about like option limitation uh, for the opponent on wake up. Just keeping them planted, basically. Yeah, because like yeah. If yeah. you can. Yeah, I mean like 2 2 H is a mid, right? Yeah, it is. So yeah, it, the thing that you're doing there is just like checking if they're gonna try and DP, um, and then like running up afterwards if they don't. But. By going for 2S, you are essentially ending your turn if you don't have any, like, ready there to continue off of it. So finding places to actually, like, start a real turn and, like, force the opponent to guess is going to be very strong. Um, and it's potentially the thing that you should be focusing on the most. Um, like we were talking about earlier with Pepto, uh, Gold Lewis is a character who is fucking, oh my god, that is painful to play neutral with it looks like. Uh, but then if he's on top of you, you're more scared, arguably, than fighting Pot. <laughs> um, Zato's kind of the same way. His neutral is way fucking better, but his defense is not good at all. So you need to take as much advantage out of your advantage advantageous states as possible. And 2D is going to probably be your best, like, standard knockdown. Um, so, like, yeah, without any, you can 2-2-H, two, two which is, should be reversal safe, I would assume. Um, and then you can run pressure It depends on the reversal and spacing. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking, like, 2-2-H two, two, and then start running in after they block it, because it's fucking active 32. <laughs> That's wild. It's got to have more than a 10 frames block stun, so you could run into close slash off of it. But, yeah, I mean, I guess... Well, maybe not against Leo's, like, X super, for example. Yeah, like, that that's the one I was thinking of. Like, it could reach you if you're not blocking during that time, but, like, yeah. Um, well, actually, so an important thing that's coming up here is how well do you understand what your pressure options are off of close slash? Well, I know I have a few options. I guess close slash, I can either... That can go directly into uh, five, five, five 5D or 2D. Um, yeah. But you could also go into um, standing H, like 5H, into uh, Pierce, and then from there you can go close slash. Uh, I know I, I don't think I know all the options. I just I know a few, but I'm definitely still at the point where I'm trying to develop getting myself to actually use them um, and like know the situations where I might want to pick one over the other. Okay, here let me go check his gallon table. Um, yeah. So, pressure options off of close slash. Um, you do have basically just the universal ones. You don't have anything particularly strong off of it. Um, 5D and 2D is definitely there. It those two don't actually get used as a mix-up very often because you know 5D has the big orange flash. So if people are looking for it, then they can just down back react to the orange. 
Um, so you'll like, that will work for a while, but eventually you'll fight people who, you know, if they know to look for it, are just not getting hit by 5D unless you're giving them a ton of other stuff to look for. Um, so what you're probably looking for off of Close Slash is a similar thing to like Geo or Soul or uh, Milia if you pretend she doesn't have TK Bad Moon or whatever, where you're looking for Stagger Pressure. Um, I'm going to be completely ignoring Eddie in this because it's good to have a base to fall back on when you don't have him. And to be honest, Eddie just like opens up such a wide swath of options that that is something you'll have to work on on your own time because you can basically start him off of anything. He's, he's an assist. But um, okay, so you've hit them, or I guess you have made them block close slash, right? Yeah. Your options here are, as you said, 5D or 2D. If you do either of those, though, and they do block it, you're in a bad spot. Um, 5D is probably the universal minus... Yeah, minus 15. Oh yeah, definitely in this situation, you wouldn't want to go directly just into one of those. You definitely just go um, uh, 5H. Like, that's the thing you always would want to do there, to, like, kind of continue that. So Almost, yeah. The, uh, the yeah. important thing about stagger pressure and like why it's good is you are making every single different button that your opponent blocks a like a real interaction. So off of close slash, you can do a couple things. You can immediately do far slash or two s. Right? Is two s a low? No. No, it's mid. Okay. Well, yeah, so Everything you're... that seems like it should be a low is mid. I, and that makes sense for the kind of character he is. They didn't want to give him more just like yeah. free unblockable shit. <laughs> They've had that in quite a few games already. Um, yeah, so close slash, uh, immediate far slash, which just keeps them in block stun. That is essentially saying, fuck this, I'm out, go to the next button. <laughs> uh, you can also do a slight delay far slash, where if you practice the timing, you can hit if they try and press a button or jump. Just put like a really tiny little gap in there. And once you start doing that, you are asking them every time the question of, are you going to press a button because you think I'm going to stop after close slash? Either go for it again, go for a throw, whatever. Or are you going to respect me pressing the slight delay far slash and not push buttons? so that I can run up and do a throw. Or, you know, just run up and do another close slash. You can do this off of basically every gap link that you have. So close slash into far slash, far slash into 5H. Um, and then you can also sort of do it with, you know, like, am I going to do drill or whatever other special off of this? And it turns it from a game of the opponent going, okay, I am going to block, you know, the, this, uh, whatever other character, like, wailing at me, close slash, far slash, 5H, uh, drill, for example, into, oh god, I blocked close slash, far slash, and then they ran up and did close slash again, because I was expecting the 5H. Now I need to start poking after the far slash. Oh fuck, I got counter hit by 5H, etc. So you're like forcing them to make decisions after each interaction. Ow! What the fuck, cat? <sighs> oh. Just tried to jump up on my lap, missed, and clawed the shit out of my leg. <laughs> Your cat has a name! Him. Call it by its name! What the fuck, Espeon? <laughs> there you go. You're right, you're right. Respect. I do not respect, respect your Pokemon. Just <laughs> the shit out of my leg because she jumped and hit her cone on the table. <laughs> oh, coned? Yeah, uh, she's it's like sad. allergic to flea saliva specifically or something, so she just like keeps trying to rip her fur out. Oh geez, yeah, poor thing. waiting for the like medicine to finish kicking in to hopefully get her past that. But... You know, um, if I could say something, this is purely based off like uh, intuition. I told you I struggle against Zato, so I'm no Zato expert. Sure. What's I've up? tried to watch some videos on him and whatnot, and it seems to me so obviously he is a technical character, especially yeah. within the context of this game, right? 
and you know your comparison to gold lewis there when you were talking about it's like your neutral can suffer uh but it's all about pushing that advantage state i think that might even be more true for zato in the sense that they designed him in a way that they're really trying to reward you know that technical ability right when i yeah. when i lose to zato players it's because they have really labbed out the eddie pressure you know and just how to do these ridiculously tight safe uh looping into itself kind of offense that leaves me just drowning and i miss like that one split second where i was supposed to jab out and now i'm in it all over again like i think it's so huge uh for zato players to have that uh like optimized uh block strings with eddie it's yeah it, it definitely is i do have to spend lots of time bobbing to make like any progress on zato yeah, i can just go get some behemoth typhoons you gotta <laughs> you got a lot of work <laughs> ahead of you yeah yeah definitely a decent amount of time dedicated to zato definitely that's learning anyway. certain new strings speaking of the yeah. extended strings um what I was just talking about with stagger pressure actually applies like double here. Your goal, if you get this situation, is to just make your opponent's life absolute hell. Force them to guess as many times as possible while staying relatively safe. Mm. Um, and something I have noticed against you, if you notice that, that when you go for the sandwich setups, I'm able to block the, uh, the overhead low like semi-reliably, um, it's because you almost always put it in right here. So I know that I need to be watching for one specific spot in the string. Every, where's the, yeah, okay. So like I was saying with close slash, um, you can back off at whatever point to you know, change up what the pressure is, whether you're gonna press the next button or throw or you know, like block the TP or whatever. Um, and that still holds true after every hit here. Because, like, obviously you can go for overheads and lows, but you also, like, right here, right? This is strike or throw. If you then close slash here, it is another strike or throw. And, like, yeah, you go for the... Uh, oh, 2S is a mid, right? So you just go for uh, yeah. something to try and catch jump out here. But you can... I think there's like a gap between both of the two Eddie hits here too, right? Yeah, the two know. Pierce hits on block is like a uh, seven or eight frame gap. Okay. Uh, so it's just... mashable, but you have to be very precise. I don't know how I got that to double, but... Um, also, if you're going to be going for grab here, you should probably go for the command grab because that refills Eddie. <laughs> and then you get well, I guess access your if, if I have Eddie out, I guess the reason I would go to uh, normal grab, I think there's a good reason to go to normal grab in these situations. Uh, definitely with Eddie this low, maybe it is better um, to go with this command grab. But also, if I land this, I'm pretty sure I just kill Leo. But yeah, if the fair. grab lands, then you go for you. That's why I'm moving Eddie back in this scenario. It's that I want to get frog, and then I want to lead that into basically a frog loop. Okay. Uh, gotcha. And then from there you sort out okay, if you actually have the meter to make that go another loop. Um, here I don't, but I have enough to know I can get the frog up to like force that into you know a finish with uh, you know a uh, two two H. Sure, yeah. So that's the hope here, where Command Grab would, would leave him with at least a little bit of health, I believe. I think the other reason to go for a normal grab over a Command Grab is you want the position from back throw. So here, if you w w ran up and actually got a back throw, you'd be throwing him into the corner. Yeah, that would be a problem, point. yeah. I think I have to definitely get used to grabbing first, like just in general, but then after that, yeah, I, I need to focus more on like making sure my, my grab directionality is like something that actually is uh being done well being paid attention to yeah because of those uh those the way the like grab involved frames work and strive it's been a real uh real really difficult for me to adjust because nothing else i've ever came from has worked that way before yeah it, at least in the case where i do my uh tick throws 
is I do a button with plus frames into a dash throw, which usually auto times it for me. Yep. Yeah, that's what I do most of the time too. Uh, even off just like minus moves, like my close slash or 5k, you'll see me do those into uh, throw a decent amount. And that's yeah. because I'm, I'm just like dashing for a set amount of time before I do it. You can probably find a very consistent timing for uh, for this, though do watch out, Faultless does add two frames of block stun to the opponent, which also means that they become throwable two frames later. And hitting them also extends their hit, stu hit stun. Yeah, quite yeah. a bit. But yeah, I would, I would definitely um, try to focus on implementing stagger pressure like that, or just like messing around with it and seeing if you can kind of get a feel for when people are going to try and mash out of things or when they're too scared to, and how you can take advantage of it. Because that will be very important for pushing your uh, offensive game super, super far. Yeah. And I think... Honestly, with like the sandwich pressure, it matters a bit less because you just have frame tight overhead low. Mm -hmm. But it, it is reactable, but like uh, it's still it, it's like much harder tight. to react to the six K as well because there's no big orange flash. Yeah, I mean, personally, I just fuzzy fuzzy time it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, done correctly, they should hit on the same point, I believe, because you can just delay the low and still have it be frame tight. But yeah, this one was a very malign move. It was like, yeah. the sword. Like, wait, where the fuck do I go? Yeah. Definitely here, my mistake was just that. I was like, oh, I have distance, and uh, I throw out the sword to keep them away from me in the corner, and then it's just like, oh, yeah, it's Leah, and they'll just, like, run up to me very quickly. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely yeah. just, like, I don't play against enough Leah, and I'm not making... Yeah, he's I... relatively slow if he doesn't commit. But yeah, if he yeah. does, um... I don't think this Leo is doing it, but so this Berserker Slash, right? Uh, see how it went. So it goes from here to behind you, but the camera is zoomed in. Yeah. Um, if you press dash right before the heavy slash, or do a two three six six H, is how you do it in the old games. Um, Leo does micro dash into thing and he carries so much fucking momentum that if the screen is zoomed all the way out and he does it from the edge of the screen it will not cross you up but it will reach you full screen yeah mm -hmm. so if okay. they commit they can get there if there is nothing yeah. between you two but and definitely yeah. like i have this habit because most characters will not be doing the, the, the distance that quickly mm -hmm. and it's usually pretty safe for me to, to do that and just get them away from me further yeah, uh, and get myself out of corner, but it's just not a thing you should do with Leia. It seems. Yeah, I, it's well, it depends. Sense, he has to commit really hard to do that. Um, like basically, if he if he, he did not instantly do wake up berserker slash, it would have worked. Mm -hmm. I guess here there's definitely a chance that on the other sets I would do. So they might have just like hard dedicated because of that. True. Yeah. Uh, also, I just wanted to point out here is another one where you pressed a 5p on wake up, and this time he actually did the uh, yeah. 5k meaty. type. But... I think he's trying to meaty with his overhead with the kick timing. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, you'll definitely see this last round here. There's definitely lots of me just like when I'm in that like really basic like backwards turned combo and in the corner from Leo. I'm still trying to figure out the actual when can I like interrupt this, and I, I'm getting punched very bad because I'm trying to explore that. It uh okay, so like super basic level one back turn Leo defense. Uh, let's loop in. Well, I'll I'll see you when we get some back turn on screen. Get some back turn on screen. Uh. happen eventually, I'm sure. Yeah. It'll happen pretty soon. They'll, they'll hit me here. Oh, wait, no, I guess they, uh... No, yeah, it happens, it happens. Real quick, here's another one where, um... 
the 5P is good because it's fast, but you have plenty of time to hit 2K or close slash here, and any yeah. of those, if they had connected, would have led into a combo that would kill. So definitely it's here, it's, it's definitely time. partially, yeah, mar uh, kind of muscle memory, not just not having that down, and just oh, yeah, kind sure. of, uh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's like why I'm bringing it up, because since it is like an automatic response, it's important to have it pointed out. Because uh, yeah. that way it'll theoretically pop into mind in games as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good punish there. And then, yeah, from here I lose it. It's just like. It's not going to be right. yeah, There's back turn. Okay. So from this spot, he has uh, the back turn kick, which is a very fast low that's also plus. He has back turn punch, which you won't see super often, I don't think. You'll never think see it. it. Here but he also just flash kicks you or something. Um, he has back turn slash, which is... That it's move. just a mid. Yeah. Yep. It's a mid. It's only... not plus in this game, is that correct? It's not plus, but it's plus on stance cancel. Mm -hmm. The important thing, though, is that he can meet you with it outside of throw range. Uh, back uh, turn kick it's... is also throw up the end, right? No. Who is it not? Nah, uh, not in this game. Okay. Uh, you just meaty. Oh, yeah, fair. And... But uh, the important thing to know is against Slash is don't get counter hit by this move because if you get counter hit, he gets the command grab true. Oh, because wow, uh, really? it puts okay. you in a stagger. Gotcha. Um, but okay, so what I was going to say is he has the fast low in back turn kick. Uh, slash, this move is like his poke, so to speak. But okay, so back turn kick. This is the range on it. Back turned uh, heavy is an overhead, but once you are out of range of back turn kick, so if you're like a little bit further behind, so if you block this at like right about this range, you can just stand block and watch for specifically him to dash. And if he does dash, you can tap up back because he will either do the cross up dash, which you jump out of, or the command grab, which you jump out of, or he's not, or like, or he's trying to dash up manually and do a low, which you will jump out of if you're fast enough. The, the jumping is just a situation you like. It's generally going to be a positive thing for you here. Jump back. Yeah, it, it's not like you don't win the situation, but you get out of the situation. Yeah, it's not. It's not progressing for them. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the specific thing to watch for, though, is once you are past a certain range on back turn slash, then you just don't have to worry anymore, and you can just stand block, react to forward movement, and you're basically good. Um, there are things that the Leo can do, but they're, like, as far as a basic anti-Leo game plan, this is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Leo does Leo things when Leo hits you. I actually disagree with that super a lot, but hey. What would you have done here? Uh, I probably would have just uh, done another uh, slash heavy slash special move RC. Or just another slash heavy slash stay in back turn. Okay, fair. Because like, be the super I here... I'm kind of surprised that the super didn't kill. Oh, yeah. I, it, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage when you're low on health. Like, okay. Or I think that this probably... Well, I don't know. You would know better than me. I'm so used to that super being the best super in the game, and it's not even close. Um, yeah. I was going to say it's probably because it started with back turn kick, which I assume for a race, but... I could definitely see them thinking it might carry the wall and kill me that way, because they I definitely killed me during other sets like that. Well, they might have just misjudged the distance. Yeah, but if he wanted to get you to the wall, I think doing another slash heavy uh, another slash... slash heavy Slash would be better, yeah. Yeah, slash heavy slash, uh, another special move, RC, move you closer to the wall. Because you, you are like a fair distance from the wall. And also, off of, off of the super, yeah. your Oki isn't very good. And uh, yeah, if it didn't put you, throw, huh? it, you just have to run up and press a meaty. It's like, you get like far slash, yeah, and it's like, kind of bad. Okay, though, anyways, uh, back to talking about Zotto rather than Leo. Um, oh, there was something I was going to say, I don't remember what. Uh, 
Well, let me think. So, we haven't really talked too much about, like, raw neutral. We've just talked about when one or the other player has pressure. Um, I think a big part of that is because I, I don't know what the fuck Zombie does in neutral, to be honest. Like, I have a very so, big idea, but I don't know, like, what would be better or worse in specific. I have some ideas, because, uh, Leap is, like, a giant hitbox. Which is very, and it's also very good at anti-airing and stuffing uh, anti -air, or, uh, airs, air moves preemptively. But it's very open afterwards because obviously it's a big, huge frog leap, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna poke Eddie after. But you could basically just do frog summon into unsummon. Just, that quite as, a a lot. Yeah. just yeah. as a neutral it's, poke. It's, I think definitely, yeah, I definitely, I think I know the thing that you can which is mainly just like being more willing to throw out a drill because I'm already doing the the frog unsummon. I just miss the unsummon sometimes. But I'm, I don't have the input down as well as I'd like. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say uh, that you, you do the unsummon thing against me a decent amount once I start TPing it. Yeah, um, I definitely know one thing I should be doing a lot more is throwing out drill into Drunker Shade and Drill because that catches lots of people out. Really, just doing X Zato thing from like between you and the other person into Drucker Shade into other Zotto thing is something I should be doing a lot more. The one reflect. that is the reflect that also pushes uh, Eddie forward to, yeah, if yeah. Eddie's close enough to you. So uh, it's definitely useful to like drill Drucker Shade then drill because um, you can just catch people out a lot. A lot of people will be expecting kind of uh, how far raging that will be. It can be it's a very quick uh, instead of input. Eddie out, right? With Eddie out. When Eddie's in neutral. And you can also unsummon from it, so it's, it's completely good for your, your Eddie's, like, the meter. Um, to be fair, the, yeah. uh, the Eddie, like, unsummoned versus have him do an attack thing is also a good example of the stagger pressure sort of thing. Like, that same idea applies there. And, like, you clearly have the, like, unsummon sometimes, press a button sometimes when you think they're going to just, like, not try and kick him because he's gone anyways, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I definitely, it feels like you have, um, you have very good combos, obviously, because you get the frog loop, and then, oh my god, Leo's lost, like, 75%. How does this happen to Leo? Yeah. Um, and, like, your neutral, I think, is good again i just like don't know zato specific stuff enough like i know that tyler mentioned something about being in the air more and i could see yeah that, but I, uh, like, yeah the air music flight myself yeah the air game is like a part of zato i'm aware of and i'm aware i'm not using i'm i'm, I'm think like i definitely like earlier today is when i started working on that trying to uh sure, yeah. actually start incorporating more of his weirder kind of air combos like the the, the you know jump kick into dust into heavy uh air or jump heavy and then from that you go into close slash um and then from you know whatever close slash to options you want after that okay. and just trying to incorporate other like type of stuff that's just one example that you know there's definitely you know he's right there's definitely more options i could be taking in the air like to be exploiting i feel like all of zato's neutral just revolves completely around like a pose and playing just entirely around a pose like anytime zato is doing something that isn't a pose, it's because it's in anticipation of me thinking he's going to do a pose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is definitely a very think... good tool in a lot of matchups. It's very good, yeah. I think I definitely think the other thing you're probably be using this to play in, like, I don't know, I feel like pretty much everything Eddie has, or uh, Zotto has with Eddie is good for neutral. Like, I think a pose is great, and definitely if you're expecting to do jump in, you want to go a pose in neutral. But um, if they're kind of being reluctant, then it's like, well, then you default the drill. Yeah. Or if you think, you know, air moves, they go right in the frog. I mean, I don't know. Like, all the stuff seems pretty nice and neutral. And he like, seems like he can play really reactively without too much, yeah. like, downside. Yeah, definitely I, can. I'm the way if the there's is. something that you can be using that's better than drill and block strings, honestly. Because on drill. Wake Up, you can make it plus because you know it hits after the active frame start but if you uh, here's can be really good it, it's like your turn is over basically yeah i mean pierce and drill are generally the things i see mm -hmm. 
from players a lot better than me using. Uh, that makes sense, yeah. Zato yeah. probably doesn't have, you know, he, he doesn't have, like, pressured specials on him. Thank God yeah. He instantly break the character. The, the more but complex it. stuff I see generally use, is using Pierce as, like, their go-to, but I don't I don't feel confident enough in my timing that I want to, like, start going to that. I, I, still, I feel like the drill's more helpful for me learning because uh, I think I have a little bit more of, like, a... I don't know. It is, it, for me personally, it's just clearer when I, I should be doing stuff when I'm doing drill. With well, Pierce, the yeah. timing definitely. And take it from me, like, uh, what is it? Uh, I, I'm i going to say I seldom see Pierce. You know, I'd, I'd fight Zato's, you know, like 60 times in a row and take two games, and I saw maybe Pierce just a handful of times. So you can definitely get plenty of mileage off of drill. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely can. But drill, I, <laughs> drill makes you fucking plus 50. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. For that. The the beer sandwich Just is. Make sure we're talking about um, Zato drill, not Eddie drill, right? That's uh, I'm uh, talking about Eddie drill. Okay, yeah. I'm talking about two two H. Two two H. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about that. So, invite hell. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Man, invite hell. All <laughs> They're all drills. It's all drills. It's if it gets yeah. blocked and you cancel into it, your turn is over. It, I don't. It's not so much as the turn is over. It, I feel it's more like in neutral, but you have minus frames. I yeah, I don't. Agree. I don't think it's the worst thing. Well, yeah, well, I, it, I don't think it's the worst yeah. thing either. I, th I might be wrong. I just feel like if this is something that you can optimize from being a slight uh, disadvantage to even a slight advantage situation, even with just like a second option that mixes up that beats people for yeah. doing this. I, I know there's definitely some stuff with with this move that Does I could be doing better. In this game? No. Oh, well, I mean, Zato has a commanding grab, but Eddie yeah, doesn't. Eddie doesn't Eddie's not, Eddie Eddie Eddie's not grab. grabbing no one now. Thank God. Oh, oh God, he used to. Yeah, yeah I know there's definitely specifically. there's definitely some stuff with this move I could I could be doing better. I know there's like ways to carry off of this or just continue pressure off this and that. Uh, like when I'm watching someone like Beautiful Dude, I'm seeing he's de definitely doing some different stuff. Like he's using this move constantly, and he'll be using it in similar spots, but he'll continue off of it way better. He'll convert off like the pressure and off of it way a lot nicer. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really think that my recommendation for where to focus would be optimizing advantage state. Yeah, I definitely put lots of work on that, but I don't know. It's just been a hard thing for me. It's uh, well, definitely I, it's, it's I, definitely I, been challenging. I think you're doing pretty solid at optimizing your Zato plus Eddie advantage state. Um, but what's ending up happening is that your solo Zato is mostly running away, even in situations where he does have the ability to exert some pressure. Um, and your Eddie meter is going down very quickly because your like preferred pattern is oppose, which drains a lot of meter into frog. Yeah, the issue there is I just miss, like, I do the unsummon, and then it's like, oh, I was a second late. So I think timing that better would probably solve a lot of that with, with oppose. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm not even necessarily talking about unsummon, I'm talking about, like, to get to it. Uh, you, To be honest, you're doing it a lot less in this match than I'm used to seeing against me, but, uh... With mil yeah, with the Milia definitely is doing case. Yeah. But. Yeah, like, for example, that, like, obviously a pose is very good, frog is very good, but it uses up the full bar, and then you're forced to back off afterwards. So finding ways to, like, just, like, cancel a pose, for example, when you don't need it and not go for frog or things like that will give you more eddy uptime. Um, and then yeah, and I do think a lot of that is I'm just... I'm not the best for negative edge, and I, uh, I'm just bad at timing the actual ones. So like, I'll do it, and then, yeah, I'll just be off. I think a lot... Yeah. Oh, that would improve with just that. Very awkward, as you're getting used to it. There's, uh, there's definitely lots of situations I've seen where I could unsummon or do something else with Eddie, and then I, because I'm doing like two H, two it's just like, oh, he's in a point now. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm doing something to the other person, so I cannot actually stop this. Gotcha, yeah, that's fair. But definitely, if I, if I had a better handle on my negative edge, I could do a lot more unsummon routes. Um... And just on summoning in general with Eddie out of that stuff to make sure he's not gone as much.
Yeah, I think that, that was really the only big thing that stood out to me. That and well, I, I guess even the other one, which is I was gonna say, going for um, finding places to intersperse larger reward pokes. Um, even that just falls under the like optimizing advantage. Um, like yeah, I definitely I want to say you should be focusing on optimizing advantage in ways where rather than trying to always be super tight on pressure you're like giving the opponent more options and then killing them for it which is what stagger pressure is but like you are zato eddie so you are one of the few characters who does get to put people in no this is frame tight fuck off guess <laughs> mix up mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's actually correct advice I'm really not sure. Something else that I think uh, is helpful is uh, if your eddy gauge is down, just jumping into the air and going into flight, you can stall for oh, oh, yeah. a decent oh. amount of time and yeah, wait for eddy again. Yeah, definitely my issue there is I run back and then I do that. Yeah. Instead of just doing it like right near them. But I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not as confident as I should be with my flight, so it's like. Yeah. I, well, if like, I do that, I know I'm going to get the end because I'm just not going to maneuver yeah. well enough to take well, like, that. How I think about it is, like, what buttons can my opponent hit to, like, stop flight? If, like, if I'm directly above Leo, what what can, what is he going to hit that will hit me? And it's basically just flash kick or a jump up and an air-to-air. -air. Uh, because, like... You can block both of those, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or just start pressing buttons if he tries to air to air. Yeah. I, think I definitely might hit. I definitely don't air block enough. That's definitely a thing. I forget that blocking the air is a thing you can do. Oh, yeah. When in doubt in this game, like you should be like you tap up forward and then hold back during the entire arc. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean it's a little different with Zato because of flight, but yeah, you still want to be true, true. like because like with flight, you generally want to like try to like make your flight path put you to an advantage position, which isn't yeah. always holding back. Yeah, so, like, I definitely think if, like, this was, like, something from two days ago, I was definitely being a lot more aggressive in, like, hovering around people with my, uh, like, with flight with flying and just, like, trying to get the, the H on uh, on people, the jump H. Um, and here I was, just, I was just trying the opposite. I was just running away a lot. And just kind of uh, putting a big distance between me and the other person. Yeah. So something that's actually really strong. Well, I don't know how strong it is. It's really annoying. But if you like super jump in the air and activate flight, uh, jump dust also stalls your air momentum the entire time. Yeah. You're doing the but moves. you can do that. Yeah. You just stay in the air for until your eddies back, and then be like, yeah, okay, I'm ready to go back onto the ground now. Definitely the only bad thing with that is that it's like super punishable. Like uh, when you lose flight, it's it's pretty. I don't know if it's easy, but it's definitely not hard for the other person to like be prepared to just get you, and there's not much you can do there. Yeah, but it, it's a it's about mixing up when you come down. So let's say like yeah. you flight, and then your options are immediately press a button and fall down from flight, do a jump dust and then fall down with another button, or do like two jump dust and then fall down with a button. So it's like. Winner, winner, they get a. When, when is audio gonna come down? Because if you try to punish, like the immediate drop down, uh, and they don't do it, and they stall with one jump dust and then come down, you punish them, and it's it's just like this weird guessing game of, when are they gonna come down, and can I anti air them from the angle they're coming in from? So you're you're, you're like playing a weird game of chicken, vertically. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Vertical chicken. Yeah, de definitely was Zada that I've seen. There's like, he has so many things going on. There's definitely always just like, so many things you could be improving on at any given moment that would all like greatly help you. Yeah. Uh, with him. Like, he has the whole flight game, but he also has, okay, how are you like applying pressure with Eddie and Zada? How are you using your solo Zada, Zada pressure and like conversions? Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely. There's just definitely always so much I can be trying to improve yeah. on with Just with, with choose one to focus on, get that one better, and then choose another one. 
Yep. Then do that until uh, you're the best auto in the world. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. The smaller the chunk, the more achievable it is, and the more you mm -hmm. are able to tell when you achieved it. So. Yeah. I do kind of prefer the uh, the more <laughs> the more like uh, bite size like. I'm gonna just implement this one air thing. Yeah, it's like more often, and then like uh, I'm also gonna be trying to work on like I want to actually do eight airs more. Yeah, uh, I don't prefer the, like the more like break shot uh, kind of wide spattering, but I'm just trying to improve on small things of like a bunch of different aspects. Yeah. All right. I think we've been over this match a decent amount. Uh, I was hoping yeah. to not hit an hour, but it is very hard for me to do a VOD review that doesn't hit an hour, it seems. Something yeah. But... I mean, definitely one thing that I felt like, at least with this one, because I was kind of just laying down during the goal Lewis one, there's probably bits you like, could have short. Like, yeah. you probably could have it... given me the sum of things quicker. That would have yeah, liked I that think... time. I think definitely that doing a VOD review with the player that we're VOD reviewing the VOD for, or they're in, That's definitely not makes it longer. Time. Yeah. Definitely, uh, it, like, it's probably better that way in some ways, because, you know, that way, oh, hey, I don't understand the situation. All right, let's break it down. But yeah, it also definitely adds to the runtime for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I meant to post this earlier, but I uh, made a playlist of all of, like, Sajam's, like, quick matchup tips against certain characters like Soul and Leo. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah. What was it? Ram, Axel, Giovanna, Leo, Chip, and Soul. Okay, well here, real There's... quick, let's, uh, let's wrap this up with one final recap. Uh, part one. Barnum, do you have any specific questions or anything in particular that you uh, wanted us to cover that we didn't? No, I mean, I'm pretty pretty happy with everything here. Alright, cool. Uh, two, then, is do you know what you want to work on off of this? Uh, if not, no worries. Um, I think the, the thing that's really changed here is that I'm probably going to work more on my, like, single Zotto, like, uh, conversions and just, like, applying pressure more when I, I still have the chance. But otherwise, yeah, I'm probably going to still work on the things I've been working on. Sure. Yep. And I think you've been, uh, finding good things to work on so far, so that makes sense for sure. Yeah, so this is uh, def helpful though, especially just understanding the Leo matchup. Yeah. yeah, it is, um, I feel like it's always kind of difficult to really know when to be like, okay, I know my character well enough for now, I need to go see how they, like, match up against this other character. You know, like, when to kind of swap your focus from your character outwards, but... Whenever it is, it's always helpful. Yeah.